Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to more Pokemon Emerald Wedlock. In the last episode, we made it here to Fort Tree City, and we got ourselves a Kecleon over on Route 120. In this episode, we're going to be taking on the Fort Tree City Gym. Don't know why I gave that a big build up, but yeah, we're going to be taking on the Fort Tree City Gym, and it is actually a rather tough gym. So, let's just uh, take a look around Fort Tree City. We didn't do much exploring of it last time. I pretty much just uh, went in here and went out the other side, but I don't think there's anything interesting we can get here. I don't think there is. I'm pretty sure we can get the TM for Hidden Power, though. Which is a okay move, I guess. Not the greatest move, but it can be quite decent. It does have, like, a random type, which is nice. I would like Hidden Power Ice, but it doesn't really matter. Hidden Power Ice is actually generally the overused one in uh, competitive battling and stuff, because there's so many Pokemon that are sort of weak to ice in uh, the OU tier, and a lot of people use it in OU. Anyway, yeah. Over here you can buy some stuff for your secret base, such as uh, chairs and desks and stuff. And I think that other one over there sells the desks and other equipment or whatever, should you need it. So, we'll see what they sell, but we're not going to buy anything. I did show you the secret bases, but I didn't really, I haven't really, I made a sign of secret base actually near the end of the series and show you guys how it looks and stuff. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to do it. So, up here, uh, we have this guy who says, no one believes me, but I saw this gigantic Pokemon in the sky. It seemed to squirm as it flew towards Route 113, or 131, wow. Um, yeah, I totally misread that. Anyway, we talked to this person here. I've said anyway so many times already. Did you just say go bird Pokemon? Hey, I asked my win my Wingle to run an errand for. Wow, well, you, you legend, you, you, you told your Wingle to run an errand. That is awesome. You should be the Pokemon League champion. I don't know. Maybe. What am I talking about? Anyway, uh, this guy here uh, says something about Steven, and uh, yeah, he may be stronger than the gym leader here, which is actually pretty tough to be because the gym leader is. Uh, Rather tough, I will admit. I am not as worried as I was about Norman's gym as I am with this gym, but this gym is still sort of worrying. Anyway, uh, we'll tell her that it's in the right hand, I guess, and we got it correct. Great, uh, let's see, it's in the left hand. Nope. Alright, so if you do this, like, mini game thing, you can get the TM for hidden power. So it's in the. Alright, whatever. Is it in the right all the time then? Let's just give that a shot, I guess. Alright, so it's in the right, and I think this time it's in the left. So. There we go, yeah, there it is. In the left, and we get the TM10, which is Hidden Power. Again, a move that can have any type, so it's pretty cool. And I believe there's only one more house to go into. It's this one. I really like Fortry City. I know a lot of people are like hoping for a Generation 3 uh, remake, but uh, this guy here will trade a Volbeat for Plusle. But yeah, people were hoping for a Generation 3 rem remake by the time X and Y was announced, or when X and Y was announced. They were expecting the big announcement to be the Generation 3 remake, but... Imagine Fortree City with X and Y graphics. Or just imagine Hoenn in general with X and Y graphics. That would be crazy. So yeah, here's hoping that it does happen. I don't really care too much, but it would be cool to get a Generation 3 remake, I guess. It does have some really awesome music. I'd like to hear it like, reorchestrated and stuff. Even though some of it is reorchestrated in black and white too. But whatever. Anyway, uh, yo, how's it going, Champ Bounce, dude? Fortree Gym Leader Winona is a master of flying type Pokemon. She's waiting at the back of the gym. Beyond the, the rotating doors. Why? Well, I, I don't care. Let me just move. I, I, I don't, I don't want to read anymore. I, I'm tired of reading stuff. Let's just take on this guy here. And yeah, this gym could be pretty tough. I do have Pokemon that can like manage it rather well, but it still could go pretty badly. Anyway, this guy here is a Skarmory on level 30. Very decent lead Pokemon, I will admit, but it does not stand up to a Thunderbolt from uh, from Barney. So we should one shot this thing, or at least I hope so. And, uh, yeah, there we go. So, Skarmory does not appreciate special attacks or attacks that it's, like, yeah, well, super effective special attacks. Physical attacks, it will eat up all day long. But if you hit it with stuff like, uh, Flamethrower or Thunderbolt, it doesn't appreciate those very well. So, definitely in your best interest to do that or use those moves against them. Anyway, yeah, this, this place is full of bird-type Pokemon or bird-type Pokemon. Bird keepers and, uh... Flying type Pokemon. I always wonder why don't they call it bird Pokemon? I mean, well, yeah, I guess you couldn't really have a Pokemon like Rayquaza being like flying and bird. That wouldn't really, or not flying, dragon and bird. That wouldn't make sense. I do prefer flying, so whatever. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Let's just spark uh, the Swablu and we'll Ice Beam the uh, Doduo. Spark should kill Swablu off, I hope. And it does, so that's great. But yeah, I know people are like, uh, it should be bird Pokemon, but then, like, Flying types or things that are part of flying would sound so strange. Even though they do call it like bird type 
in game and not flying. They always say like, oh, bird Pokemon or whatever, but it's actually the flying type. But I guess they're just using like bird based Pokemon, I guess. Bird based flying types, I'm pretty sure. That's uh, the only kind of, well, there's dragon and flying, so yeah, I don't even know what I'm talking about, but bird and flying, kind of the same thing, but kind of not. I, like, I wouldn't call Tropius a bird, because it's a flying type, and it doesn't look like much of a bird, it looks, it's a dinosaur, so it's, yeah, it's not really a, uh, it's not really a bird, so I wouldn't really call it a grass and bird Pokemon, just wouldn't sound right. Just thinking about it now, it doesn't sound right, calling them bird Pokemon. I'm so used to flying types over the years, so, yeah. That's my two cents on the whole bird versus flying type debate. If there ever is a debate about it, I've never seen it, but we're trying to learn Double Edge. It's a very powerful move, and with huge power, it will definitely be, uh, definitely be a powerful move to have. See, 120 base power. The only thing is you take recoil damage, but I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna teach it to my, uh, Maryland anyway. Despite the recoil damage and stuff, it's still a very powerful move, and with huge power, it's only gonna be even stronger, so definitely, uh, I think it's definitely worth my while to teach it that. And what we'll do now is, uh, Thunderbolt the Skarmory, and we will Ice Beam the Swablu. And yeah, these trainers, as you can tell, rather easy if you have Electric or Ice. They will go down generally quick. They don't really take much hits. They're not very durable. And, uh, yeah, it's just pretty plain sailing if you have either of those types. So, if you do, then you should have an easy run in here. I definitely recommend having Manetric or Electrode Magneton. All, well, maybe, yeah, well, all of those types will be pretty good. So long as you have an ice type, or so, so long as you got ice beam and applied it to a Pokemon, then uh, you should be good. So remember, go back to the uh, sunken ship or the abandoned ship on the way to Duford, because that is where you get the TM for ice beam, and ice beam is very very helpful in this gym, as you'll see when we get to Winona. Yeah, that's it. So commentary already sounds very weird to me today, but I think that's because I've like a little bit of a headache. And, uh, I'm, like, part of me is worried about this gym and a part of me isn't. I'm pretty sure I should be worried, though, because it could be a challenging gym. And, uh, what we'll do is just sparks. I have, oh, I have 13 Thunderbolts. I thought, I, I thought I had way less than that, but turns out I have enough, so. Uh, yeah, Swellow. Generally a fast Pokemon. It, uh, does hit really hard, too, so be careful with these things. As you can see, I'm, uh, five levels ahead of this thing and it still outsped me, so... It is a fast Pokemon, and we already know it's fast, and we already know how hard it hits. We did have poor little uh, Sparrow faint on us in the uh, in the last gym, which still haunts me to this day. I'm afraid I'm I'm still not over all the I'm still not over the massacre that was the Petalburg City gym. That was just yeah, that was just a crazy massacre, and I don't feel right thinking about it anymore. I I probably should get it out of the back of my mind. So we'll spark the Pelepper and we'll Ice Beam the Zatu. No point in wasting Thunderbolt on Pelepper when it is quad weak to Spark. And Spark takes it out. So, uh, yeah, this could be a pretty short episode actually, depending on how the gym battle goes. Uh, Nightshade, this Zatu is not very threatening, honestly. Pretty much, I should just take it out with an Ice Beam, actually. Maybe not Ice Beam, it's... I think a Spark allowed to finish it off. Does Ice Beam kill? Ice Beam does not kill. Ice Beam only does about... 60%, which honestly is not enough, but Spark will finish it, so it's alright. It's okay, Maryland, you did you did your job. You hit that thing with a Ice Beam or, or an Ice Beam. I seem to screw that up a lot. I always see, I seem to say, like, letters that begins with vowels and put an A in front of it when I meant to put an N in front of it. I don't know, just English, man, it's it's easy. I, I'm just stupid. So let's Super Potion up. Uh, get ourselves up to full HP, exactly. I think I should probably use an elixir if I have one. Uh, do I have one? I do. I'll use it on Maryland, actually, because it, he is uh, running low on ice beams, and I will need those ice beams for the gym leader. So let's just figure out this puzzle. Uh, actually, I meant to turn that one over there around, I think. So let's see. Uh, turn this up this way, I think. No? Uh, this gym is, like, confusing sometimes, so... Actually, yeah, now I think I know what I have to do, so... I'll uh, we'll take on this trainer first, and then we'll figure it out. Um, yeah, this gym, I mean, I know a lot of people get stuck on it. I, It's usually just this last part I get stuck on, but we have a Tropius here in level 30, and I probably should have let off in Maryland so I could Ice Beam this thing, but 
We'll see how much the Thunderbolt does. It should do about a third, maybe even half. Half would be really good. It is uh, neutral effective. And it kills it with the critical hit. Not bad. Not bad at all. I will happily accept that. I will accept any hacks. Just because I'm worried that I will lose a Pokemon. So, nice bit of crit hacks there. That's great. Pushes over here. Then up and around. And down here. I am pushing this over here and up and there we go. So we're at the gym leader. <sighs> All right, let's do this thing. I am Anona. I'm the leader of the Four Tree Pokemon Gym. I have become one with Bird Pokemon and have soared the skies. However, however grueling the battle, we have triumphed with grace. Witness the elegant choreography of Bird Pokemon and I. All right, so here we have Winona, usually regarded as one of the hardest gym leaders in the game, and she is very tough. She's the user of flying type Pokemon. She leads off the Swap Blue, so yeah, it's not the greatest lead, obviously. It's on level 29. We'll go for Thunderbolt, and we should one shot it. We are nearly on level 35. So I'm expecting this to do a lot of damage, and it just takes it out outright, which is great. So that's uh, one Pokemon down. She still has a lot more to go, though. So yeah, be worried about that. She's going to send in her signature Pokemon like right away the evolved form of Swap Blue. That is Altaria. It is a dragon and flying type. So doing electric type moves is only going to do neutral damage. And this is the main reason why I taught Maryland Ice Beam, because Ice Beam is quad effective on this thing. This thing is... I don't even know how to describe it. It uses Dragon Dance a lot to boost its attack and its speed. Uh, don't stay with your electric types, by the way, because it does pack the move Earthquake, which means it is going to demolish you with Earthquake. This thing is so tough to take out. Look at that, it's quad effective, it only does half, and it has a Citrus Berry as well, so... This thing is a monster, it, I'm so afraid of this thing. I'm pretty sure another Ice Beam will kill. I hope that she doesn't take me out with Earthquake. I'm almost certain I can survive. And, wow, that did nothing. All right. <laughs> uh, that's okay then. But, yeah, this thing is a massive threat. And I would definitely be very cautious if this thing went battling it. Just because of how tough it is. It can be really annoying to take out. But if you have Ice-type moves like Ice Beam that you got back at the abandoned ship, then, then you should be perfectly fine, honestly. There really should be no difficulty. So long as you have a Pokemon that can, like, eat its attacks. So it's going for another uh, Dragon Edge. I probably, when she healed up, I should have went for a Defense Curl. Because I would have uh, got the boost in defense. But I'm pretty sure another Ice Beam will kill. Depending on min-max damage. I'm hoping for max. And we get max. Or whatever. So, yeah, we take out Altaria. And now the gym is pretty much uh, plain sailing. So I'm very happy. Tropius is coming in next. I'm going to just stay in. Um, Oh, this is a... Do I outspeed? I don't think I... Do I outspeed? I do outspeed. I hit it with Ice Beam. Don't know if it kills, though. It is quad effective as well, so gotta hope for the kill here. And that's a 2 hit KO as it goes for Solar Beam. That's fine. I do outspeed. I've already shown that I outspeed. So it's alright. Whew! That could have went very wrong. That was a big risk, I will admit. So, I got lucky. I, um... I was just banging on me outspeeding, really. If I didn't outspeed, then I was in trouble. But Pelepper's next, and she has two Pokemon left. Pelepper and, I believe, Skarmory. So, yeah, Manectric just cleans up the rest of the gym for us here with Thunderbolt. And, yeah, pretty easy gym. Just took a little bit of a risk there in thinking that I outsped the, uh, the Tropius. Even though Tropius is rather slow, I think, so... Yeah, it's... It's alright. So, Pelepper just, uh, one-shot it with the Thunderbolt. It's pretty obvious, because it is quad weak to Electric. And Barney does have very decent special attack. And finally, Everts have Skarmory, which is on level 30, I believe, as well. Level 31, so Thunderbolt should kill this thing. And that will pretty much do it for Winona's Gym, I think. Should it kill? Yes, it kills. And that's it for Winona's Gym. Pretty short battle, I will admit. Pretty easy gym, too, when you have the right typings. And a level 35 for Escargo, that's awesome. But we defeated Winona. Never before have I seen a trainer command Pokemon with more grace than I. In recognition of your prowess, I present you with this gym badge. So yeah, there we go. Pretty easy, actually. It could have been a lot worse. Get the Feather Badge from Winona, and uh, Maryland and and uh, Barney just got the job done. With the Feather Badge, all Pokemon up to level 70 will obey you, even those received through trades. You will also be able to use the move Fly out of battle, and this is a gift from her. It's TM40. It's her signature move that she never even used. It's Aerial Ace. Very powerful move. It never misses two, so... Yeah, I would definitely recommend teaching it to a Pokemon if you uh, have one that can learn it. I think I'm actually teaching it down to my Grobot so I can combat other grass types. So let's just do that. I don't really have anything else that I can learn it, I think. So teaching it to my Grobot would be a nice uh, boost. And uh, yeah, Grobot is the only Pokemon I have that can learn it. So 
Let's just teach Aerial Ace. And uh, Zigglypuff is holding an item I can take. We are going to get rid of the move. Uh, I think I'm going to get rid of Quick Attack. Even though it has priority, I'll just get rid of Quick Attack. And uh, there it is. So, Teal learned Aerial Ace, which is sweet. And I'm going to just take the item off Zigglypuff. And that will wrap it up here. So, that's pretty much it. I would like to thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Pokemon Emerald Wedlock, even though it was rather short. And the gym was sort of, uh, uh, I would say, anticlimactic, I guess. But that's just the way it is, I guess. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys for more shortly enough. So, catch you then.